Rheumatoid arthritis is one of the most common types of inflammatory uh, rheumatic diseases. And although we have several different treatment options, there is still an unmet need and a good number of patients are still suffering from pain, disability and, and deformities. And the greatest advantage of uh, the current knowledge is the identification of pathogenic pathways and also targeted treatments. And the biggest game changer was the discovery of anti-TNFs and then other biologic treatments which really helped to treat our patients. And now we have several different biologic agents which are quite helpful in the treatment of patients who are not responding to standard treatments. And now we have another game changer which is a small molecule but it is a targeted new small molecule inhibiting different cytokines at the same time by inhibiting their JAK kinases. The, the first one in this class is tofacidinib and so far all of the clinical trial data and the now real life data is supporting the evidences we collected during clinical trials as a promising agent in the treatment of both methotrexate naive or methotrexate inadequate responder or, or TNF uh, or other biologic uh, failing patients. So tofacidinib as the first drug in, in his own class is providing us a new treatment option as an oral small molecule uh, with a similar safety profile with biologic agents and a very good efficacy. I think that is the beginning of a new area using a small molecule uh, and also achieving similar results with the biologic agents. We have now different treatment options targeting different uh, inflammatory pathways including B cells, T cells and different cytokines. They have actually achieving more or less similar results and they have similar efficacy profiles but we still need some additional uh, treatment options at least for those patients who are not responding one of them. And most of the new biologic agents are used as either subcutaneous or intravenous uh, drugs and tofacidinib is providing another option as a small molecule which is uh, an oral drug with a very short half-life but a very similar efficacy and safety profile. So within the rheumatoid arthritis uh, clinical guidelines, which is actually a stepwise approach, starting with uh, methotrexate or similar uh, synthetic drugs, and then uh, going up to different types of biologics, tofacidinib or, or other JAK inhibitors are taking place as a second or third line drugs very similar to other biologic. So it will be a, an option for our patients as an oral medication uh, with a similar safety and efficacy profile with biologics. Where opportunistic infections including tuberculosis is always been a risk, especially after the use of anti-TNFs, uh, we started to notice the immunosuppression related reactivation tuberculosis. Uh, but since we know this uh, immunosuppression associated reactivation, we took uh, different measures first to recognize at risk patients and then to, uh, to treat them uh, before reactivation. So, latent tuberculosis screening programs and the INH prophylaxis is working very well uh, for a very long time, and tofacidinib by inhibiting different cytokines including IL-12 and interferon gamma is also another drug increasing the risk of uh, reactivation tuberculosis. But we are applying exactly the same rules, so the screening of uh, latent tuberculosis infections by PPD or interferon gamma release assays 
and when the patient has latent infection uh, using nine month isoniazid prophylaxis or if there is a problem with INH rifampicin for, for four to six months is usually uh, an effective measure to control latent tuberculosis infection and preventing the reactivation. These agents have different safety features, although more or less they are quite similar. And tofacidinib has a unique feature with an increased risk for uh, herpes zoster infection. Although it is not a big deal, uh, but it is about two times higher than the risk we observe in biologic agents. Usually, most of these patients, more than 90% of these patients, not so serious, uh, usually mild or moderate cases, and affecting a single dermatome. So the serious herpes zoster infections, which are usually multidermatomal or systemic uh, zoster infections, are at low rate, and the rate of these serious ones are quite similar with the rate of uh, biologic agents. Uh, for the herpes zoster infections, we usually take a history and, and, and also follow the patients carefully. And although EULA recommendations are uh, suggesting to use of uh, zoster vaccination, which is a live vaccine, especially in patients uh, who are 50 or, or, or older, uh, the total number of patients is, is really changing between different countries. And in Europe, the risk for uh, zoster is uh, considerably low compared to Asian countries. So therefore, a careful monitoring uh, is, is usually helpful. And, and usually, we don't use zoster vaccination as a preventive measure. I think regarding the definition of methotrexate refractory patients, there is nothing changed. And but for those patients who are not responding to standard of care, uh, having different options is always helpful because in the real life we have uh, different unmet needs in, in different patients. Uh, for example, all of the biologics are uh, really requiring an IV or, or sub-Q uh, method of injection or infusion. And Tofacitinib is, is providing a different way of administration. So the oral drug is easier to use for uh, many patients and it's providing them a more flexible uh, drug carrying or increasing their uh, drug use in a different way. And I believe depending on the patient's social status or, or, or different requirements, different professional needs, having different sets of uh, treatment options. For example, for some patients who are not living uh, close by to the university hospitals or, or they have a limited access to uh, tertiary care centers, uh, rituximab, which is uh, giving us an opportunity to, to see patients less frequently and giving the injections in about uh, six months intervals is an option. But for some other patients, we really want to see them regularly because of their uh, severe disease or social status. So the IV infusions in every month or every six or uh, eight weeks is an option. But for some patients, having an oral medicine is the preferred one. So JAK inhibitors, by giving us an opportunity to hit another target, but also providing us another way of administration, which is an advantage. Regarding the efficacy, there is no clear difference. And although it's a small molecule, its efficacy is starting quite fast, uh, within usually two weeks. And it's reaching its uh, consistent blood level within days. Uh, therefore, its efficacy profile in terms of rapid onset of action and also reaching uh, the, the remission rates at similar uh, amount is, is very similar to biologics. And although it is not affecting uh, or, or targeting just single uh, cytokine, the combination uh, is usually quite the right combination for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and also for ulcerative colitis and, and psoriatic arthritis. 
And the beauty of maybe uh, using a small molecule with a short half-life is it is not uh, a continuous uh, inhibition of jack enzyme so it's giving you an opportunity to, to recover within the day and also whenever we see a safety signal uh, the, this short half-life is, is providing another beneficial effect because whenever you stop the medication it's easy to to uh, give the patient a chance to recover quite uh, fastly so it is really uh, an advantage and, and having another tool in the armamentarium uh, that we are having in, in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis is really a, a big advantage for us. Immunogenicity is another issue. I mean, in biologic drugs, we have the, the problem of immunogenicity since most of them are either monoclonal antibodies or receptor fusion proteins, they are immunogenic proteins. Therefore, uh, there is a potential of inducing anti-drug antibodies and also whenever we stop the medication and the restart of the medication is increasing some of the adverse events so stopping and restarting several times is increasing the immunogenicity issue uh, so having a small molecule is, is really a great advantage because of the short half-life you can stop whenever you want and if you restart the medication uh, you're achieving exactly the same efficacy. Therefore, it is a big advantage compared to uh, biologic agents. And we have real-life data which is showing that in patients responding uh, to facitinib, the efficacy is sustained. So they have the, the similar efficacy sustaining for years.